COVID-19 cases surge in Nagaland with a total of 57 fresh cases reported from the state. The fresh cases are reported from six districts of Nagaland. Kohima sees a spike in the number of COVID-19 cases amid calls from prominent organizations of Kohima demanding total lockdown in the district to check the spread of the virus. And India adds 37,724 fresh cases of COVID-19 today, taking the country's tally to 11,92,915, while recovery surged to 7,53,049. Well, those were the headlines. Hello and welcome once again to this news broadcast from News & Trends. We begin this bulletin by taking a look at the COVID-19 update from the state. COVID-19 cases surged in Nagaland with a total of 57 fresh cases reported from the state during the last 24 hours. The fresh cases were reported from six districts with Dimapur and Kohima, seeing a spike in the number of cases. Even as we broadcast this bull bulletin, there are reports coming in from various sources that more and more positive cases are being detected through, through NAT tests. The surge in the cases were informed by State's Health and Family Welfare Minister Espang Yupom through his tweet which said out of 513 samples tested, 57 positive cases of COVID-19 have been confirmed, 23 were reported in Dimapur, 18 in Kohima, 7 in Zinaboto, 5 in Perin and 2 each in Mon and Mokokcho. Dimapur continues to be the worst hit district in terms of the number of positive cases of the coronavirus. The district has so far reported 433 cases while 163 patients have recovered. Active cases now stand at 270. Out of the active cases, one patient is mild, one is moderate and one is on ventilator support as per the severity of the cases. Meanwhile, four more police personnel in Dimapur tested positive via TrueNet screening, informing News & Trends over phone, ADCP Crime, Dimapur Rail OT, IA, said the samples of four constables of West Police Station screened by TrueNet returned positive yesterday. IA informed that the four samples were sent for confirmatory RT-PCR tests today. Dimapur police meanwhile tweeted that as a precautionary measure, the general access to West Police Station will be partially restricted in view of the preliminary detection of four suspect COVID-19 cases among the police station staff. Meanwhile, according to a DIPR report, the condition of an 82-year-old male patient who tested positive for COVID-19 by TrueNAT and RT-PCR on 18th July and was admitted in ICU COVID-19 hospital Dimapur on 19th of this month, is critical with unstable blood pressure, yet other vitals are maintained. The patient who came from ICU Eden Medical Center Dimapur has comorbid conditions, is a diabetic with past history of open-heart surgery and pulmonary tuberculosis. The patient was treated on 16th July at Shamrock Hospital and on 17th of this month at Nikos Hospital and Eden Medical Center. DIPR courting health officials said the patient has a typical COVID lung picture with respiratory distress and is on ventilator support. The report said that the treatment protocol is being maintained for COVID-19 patient on ventilator. MS Dimapur Dr. Kasheto informed that the patient is being monitored by a medical team comprising of one doctor two nurses and two attendants on eight hourly rotation basis. MS Dimapur sought prayer support from one and all for speedy recovery of the patient. Meanwhile, Kohima's tally of COVID-19 cases surged beyond the 200 mark even as calls from prominent organizations of Kohima City who echoed sentiments of public have demanded a total lockdown in the state capital for at least two weeks to check the rapid spread of coronavirus. Making the demand, Association of Kohima Municipal Wars Panchayat and Kohima Village Council KVC have asked the state government to impose a total lockdown for two weeks immediately. The two bodies have urged the government to immediately impose a total lockdown for two weeks to prevent spread of the virus so as to break the chain of the infection. 
With an addition of 18 fresh cases, the capital district of the state now has 216 cases reported, out of which 107 have recovered, and active cases stand at 109. Interestingly, we at News & Trends posed the question on the subject in one of the popular Facebook group, the Naga Mirror, on whether the call for total lockdown in Kohima, as demanded by the Colony Ward Associations, and the Kuima Village Council were justified, and here's what some of the blockers had to say. Zinabutu's tally of COVID-19 cases reached double digit with an addition of seven new cases. All the fresh cases were linked to the Border Security Force personnel stationed at Sataka. Informing this through phone, CMO Zinabutu Dr. Akaho said that seven out of the 77 samples sent to BSL-3 lab at NHAK for confirmatory RT-PCR tests turned out positive. The CMO also informed that another seven samples were tested by TrueNAT today and one sample has tested positive. Dr. Akoho informed that all the positive patients have been admitted at COVID-19 hospital at Zinaboto and they are all stable. Parents' tally of positive cases crossed the 250 mark with an addition of five more cases today. The district is the second worst hit after Dimapur with 253 cases. While well, 158 patients have recovered, active cases now stand at 95 with one patient having mild symptoms while the rest are asymptomatic. Mon's addition of COVID-19 tally has now reached 99 with an addition of two more cases today. A total of nine persons have recovered from the infection and active cases now stand at 91. Mongkok Chong has so far reported seven cases out of which two have recovered and there are five active cases in that district. Ifri still remain the only district in the state that has not reported any COVID-19 cases so far. As per the data provided by the Department of Health and Family Welfare, the state's tally of total positive cases now stands at 1,084, with 486 recovered in active cases at 598. Recovery rates stand at 44.83%. India added 37,724 fresh cases of COVID-19 today, taking the country's tally to 11,92,915, while recovery surged to 7,53,049, with 28,472 people having recuperated in a day, the highest so far according to the Union Health Ministry data. The death toll due to the disease rose to 28,732, the data updated at 8 a.m. showed. There are 4,11,133 active cases of coronavirus infection presently in the country, while 7,53,049 people have recovered so far. Thus, 63.13% of the people have recovered. Maharashtra has reported the highest number of cases, followed by Tamil Nadu, Delhi, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Gujarat, and Telangana. In the Northeast, the number of COVID-19 cases has gone up to 25,382 in Assam, 3,331 in Tripura, 2015 in Manipur, Arunachal Pradesh has 858, Meghalaya has reported 490 cases, Sikkim 330, and Mizoram has reported 317 infections so far. The overall number of global COVID-19 cases has increased to over 14.94 million while the deaths have topped more than 6.16 lakh according to the John Hopkins University. As of this morning, the total number of cases stood at 1 crore 49 lakh 44,163 while the fatalities rose to 6 lakh 16,402. 
The U.S. accounted for the world's highest number of infections and fatalities at 38,99,148 and 1,41,992 deaths according to the CSSC. Brazil came in the second place with 21,59,654 infections and 81,487 deaths. Deputy Commissioner Kohima Gregory Tejawale has informed that with the detection of COVID-19 positive person at Duck Lane Colony, Kohima, Municipal Ward No. 7, the Office of the Deputy Commissioner had declared demarcated it as a containment zone on 7th July 2020, whereby various restrictions were imposed to contain the spread of disease infection and the zone area was kept under strict and active medical surveillance and movement within the zone was restricted prohibited to the public. Accordingly, contact tracing of the COVID-19 positive person was carried out by the CMO coordination team led by the district surveillance officer and epidemiologist Kohima and all the primary and secondary contacts were identified and tested for COVID-19 and found to be COVID negative. In total, 127 contacts were traced out of which 5 were high risk contacts and 122 were low risk contacts. Therefore, as per the advisory guidelines of the medical department and since all contact tracing is completed and tested, the Deputy Commissioner Kohima has notified that the containment zone is being lifted and declared that all normal activities at Duckland Colony Kohima Municipal Ward 7 is allowed to resume henceforth as per various SOPs of the government which is still enforced. According to DIPR report, this order shall come into force with immediate effect. Deputy Commissioner Kohima Gregory Tejawili has also informed that in view of the detection of a COVID-19 positive person residing at Sekhazo Colony, Kohima, the area defined below is demarcated as sealed area. All movement of a person vehicles within the defined sealed area is strictly restricted, prohibited for public movement and is placed under active medical surveillance. Now, in a case of some positivity coming out due to the lockdown imposed in the state, a young educated girl from Zinabuto first saw her venture in business succeed but suddenly dipped low due to the lockdown. But undeterred, she has found some ways to keep her enterprise going and succeeding yet again. Let's find out in this report. Vitogali K. Jimo, 31 years old of Liz Nauto village, currently residing at Lagilato Colony, Zanabato, holds a master's degree of literature from Pune University. Vitogali shared that she had been out of Nagaland after her post graduation doing job at a BPO earning quite a few fine money, but was dissatisfied as she always wished to do some welfare for Zanabato people and then decided to return home. Here at Zinaputo, she taught in schools and while also learning to mould her personality, she got to know the different types of students and their problems in life. She said she wanted to do something of her own while helping the society but like many others, struggled initially to set up her life causing depression and insomnia. She then went on to start a business by running a cafe and fate helped her find a big room enough to start one which had to be renovated and her friends helped her beautify her cafe by contributing flowers and decors also help her serve the customers. She also shared that as a lady with MA in English, she was criticized by society on seeing her investing time and money, but she paid not a note to these discouragement but stayed determined. She said that she faced many challenges in this venture but the nationwide total lockdown was one of the worst. With rent to pay and with no customers, she realized the need of having alternative source of earning and started with an idea to make tofu, which she learned during her college days. Tofu is made of curdled soya milk and is very rich source of protein, helps diabetes patients, etc. With this brisk business going, she attributes all these to God, whom she believes is a blessing in return for the little thing she did to others and little efforts she gave serving church as prayer secretary and above all her parents' prayers. Well, we can only wish her the very best in this uh, venture. On that note, we wind up this bulletin. Do subscribe to us on a YouTube channel and also follow us on a Facebook page as well. 
and stay updated with the latest from across the world, the country, the region and the state as well. Meanwhile, stay safe, practice safe health hygiene and maintain social distancing wherever you are. But most importantly, take good care of yourself. Thanks for watching.